Hi guys, it's Jessie and I am back with our Pie of the Month series. April on the blog is all about fancy fixins or feeling fancy if you're looking for the category on my blog on my website. It's where I want to show you dishes that are great for Sunday company, they're great for holidays, great for special occasions, and it's things that we typically don't think to cook at home or we don't want to. Instead, we would love to eat this out at a restaurant. I want to show you how easy and great they can be at home. And that is where this pie is going to come in. This pie is actually an homage to my sister, my one and only. Hi, Misty. She brought this pie and this recipe into my home and into my life a few years ago, and I absolutely fell in love with it. It's a beautiful pie. It is perfect when peaches are in season. It'll be great for the summer, so I wanted to go ahead and get it to you. But I want to show you today how to make Southern Blueberry Peach Crumble Pie. The first thing I'm going to do is take a cup and a half of all-purpose flour and put it into a mixing bowl. We are going to make our pie crust first. Now the next thing I'm going to add is an entire stick of butter, eight tablespoons to be exact, and you can use a pastry cutter if you want. You can do this with your fingers, but I actually like to grate my cold butter into my flour for my pie crust recipes. So I'm going to take a grater. This is really simple to do. This pie crust is not only easy, it is delicious, and you can use this crust for everything. As a matter of fact, this is my favorite pie crust, and I'm just going to grate it. Nothing hard about that. Now, if you see that your butter is starting to melt because it's in your hand and your hands are warm, it's a good idea to place the stick of butter into the freezer to get it really hard before you do this. But today I'm just winging it, okay? We're just gonna get it done. What's funny is it looks like cheese. Because it's the same color. So I can't remember, we were having a holiday, a get together at my house many years ago and my sister was in charge of bringing a dessert and she showed up with this pie and when I tell you guys that it was amazing it was amazing the only change I made to her recipe is that I like to chop the peaches up and I'm going to show you in just a minute um, whereas she left her peaches whole when you get close to the end of this be very careful don't get your fingers it would just be better to just Squish it by hand after that because you do not want to grate off your skin into the mixture. Okay, I'm going to make sure I turn it over and get all of that butter on the back. Okay, now that I have the butter grated in there, I'm just going to take my fingers and I don't really know the right word for this. I'm just trying to mix the butter and the flour together until it resembles like cornmeal, you know, like it's real mealy. I'm wanting to get that butter fully incorporated into the flour is what I'm doing. So I'm just squishing it between my fingers like this. I'm gonna continue to do this until all of that butter is broken up and incorporated into the flour. And I think I'm just about there. This is probably my favorite fruit pie, like for sure. And I know that apple pie is a big deal, but I've never been a super huge fan of apple pie. I am going to be working on a recipe for apple pie to make myself like it, and I'm going to have to adjust it and make it, I don't know, more my own. I think one of the things is going to be slicing those apples incredibly thin or chopping them up. I don't like big chunks of peaches in this pie, and I don't like big chunks of apple in apple pie. So I'm going to be working on that because that pie is going to be coming in the fall. Now that I've got all of that butter incorporated, I'm going to add a little bit of salt. The whole recipe, of course, is on the blog. Add one egg. I'm going to add half a tablespoon of white vinegar. And this recipe makes one pie crust. I know a lot of times uh, recipes make two and you can freeze the other one, but this one is just a single pie crust, okay? So if you wanted to make two, a top and a bottom, I don't need a top for my pie, but you would need to do two of these. And lastly, I'm going to add ice cold water, a tablespoon at a time, until this becomes a nice dough. I'm gonna start with three. One, two, three. Okay, I'm gonna use my hands and I'm just gonna mix this together until it forms a dough. It's not gonna take long. 
You could also mix this with a spatula if you wanted to and then get your hands in there at the last minute. It's whatever you want to do. I don't mind getting my hands a little dirty. It is starting to come together because you can see like it's starting to stick. And that's what we want. We want a dough to form. And then this is the time you can see, okay, I need to add a little bit more water. Um, remember, go easy because you can always add water. You can't take it out. <laughs> Once you get it wet, you'd have to add more flour and that's not really what we want to do. Okay. And so, yeah, I definitely don't want to add any more water. My dough is coming together. It's actually a little bit, just a touch sticky. But as I work it, that's, it's not sticky anymore. Okay, I'm just working it in my hands. Just like this. I'll show you. See the flakes of butter? This crust is incredibly buttery and flaky. It's just really good, guys. This one's a keeper. And it's so easy. You can't get any easier than this. There's no reason why you should do a store-bought pie crust. Don't do it. You can do this. Okay, my dough is formed, and now we are going to put it in plastic wrap for the fridge. I hate this stuff. I hate it. If you stick around very long, you'll know I hate it. I like cling wrap, but I bought this, and we're going to use it up, and it, it does okay for what I want to do right now with this pie crust. All right, so I'm going to take my dough and stick it on the cling wrap. I'm going to wrap it in the cling wrap just by folding over, right? And I'm going to flatten it with my hand because I want it to be a disc because that's gonna make it easier to roll out after it sits in the fridge for about 30 minutes, okay? So after I have flattened it into a disc, I am just going to finish wrapping it just like that. Perfect. Okay, I got my pie crust ready. I've got it wrapped. I've got it flattened. I'm going to pop it in the fridge for 30 minutes to let it chill and set, and then we will continue on with our pie. While we wait on our pie crust to chill in the fridge for about 20 to 30 minutes, we are going to get our fruit filling ready because it also needs to sit for about 15 to 20 minutes. It doesn't hurt it to sit any longer than that. What's going to happen is the lemon juice is actually going to make the juices of the fruit come out even more. And this is where we're going to get a pie that is not dry. Now, if it's peach season, by all means, please use fresh peaches. Our peach season is actually in June and in a town near me, they have a peach festival. So I'm probably going to go get some peaches this year in order to make this pie fresh. But because we don't have any right now that are fresh, I am gonna use frozen sliced peaches. I do not recommend using canned peaches at all. It's a texture thing and a lot of times they are canned in syrup. Even if they're canned in juice or in water, it's still a texture thing. So I would, I would say no to that. I would go with frozen or fresh. I'm gonna need two cups of blueberries and two cups of peaches. I told you earlier, I don't like big chunks of peaches in my pie. So I got my cutting board out because I'm going to cut up the two cups of peaches. And my really good chopping knife is in the wash. So we're using a serrated knife. Don't judge me, it happens, okay? This is real life. Get this where you can see it. I'm just going to chop them up. I don't know. There's something off-putting to me about really large pieces of fruit in my pie. I'm a huge texture person. I mean, I love all textures, but I like a contrast of textures. And I don't know, when you bite into one big piece of apple or one big piece of peach, it's kind of overwhelming. So, half a cup. I'm hoping my sister doesn't mind the change that I made. You know, recipes are like that. You taste it, you like it, you love it, or there's like one thing you don't like about it or something you want to change and you make it your own. And that's how you do it. The serrated knife is actually working quite well, so. Where there's a wheel, there's a way. 
guess at the end of the day, a knife is just a knife. Right? Cut that in. This is a half cup. And that's why I needed four of them, just in case you're wondering. And that's perfect. I chopped up the perfect amount of peaches. Now the blueberries, I am not, not gonna chop up the blueberries for obvious reasons. They are bite size. <laughs> They're the perfect size. Now it's time to add our two cups of blueberries. Yes, you're baking. Yes, measurements are important. Yes, you should wash your berries. You can also keep them in glass jars after you've washed and dried them really well and they will keep a, a, they'll keep a good long while. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of cornstarch. It's gonna help thicken up our sauce, you know, for our pie. You're gonna add one tablespoon of fresh squeezed lemon juice. I've got my lemon and to help the juices get flowing so that you can squeeze it out better, you can always give it a really hard roll and press on your surface and that really gets it going. Like I already feel it, it's not hard anymore. I'm gonna squeeze that. Well, seeds came out first, so there we go. I'm gonna squeeze this straight into my measuring spoon. And this lemon is incredibly juicy. It pretty much just took half, okay? I do have some seeds I missed. I'm gonna grab them really quick. You do not wanna bite into a lemon seed in your pie, not what you want, okay? And last, we're gonna add two tablespoons of white sugar. I'm just gonna mix all of this together. I really wanna make sure all of the fruit is coated with the cornstarch, the lemon juice, and the sugar. And like I said, that lemon juice is gonna make the natural juices of the fruit start to come out. And then that cornstarch is gonna be our thickening agent. It acts just like flour. And of course the sugar to make it sweet. The fruit literally starts to glisten. <laughs> Cover it with a clean dish towel, let it sit for 15 minutes and do its thing. And about that time, my pie crust will be ready to take out of the fridge and to roll out into our pie dish. I'll be right back. All right, you guys, it's been about 30 minutes, so I've got my dough out of the fridge. The thing I want to do is preheat my oven to 350 degrees, because by the time I've rolled out my dough, put the pie filling in it, and then made my crumble topping, it'll be ready to go in the oven. So it's a great way to time everything so that there's no wasted time. So I got that going. I'm going to take some all-purpose flour and just sprinkle it on a surface. So this is my floured surface. And I'm going to unwrap my dough and place it right on there. And we're gonna roll our dough out to fit whatever pie plate we have. I have this one, which I think is actually a lot larger than most people's, but I don't mind. I like a bigger pie, that's okay. Put some flour on my rolling pin. Remove this bowl. And I'm just going to apply gentle pressure to roll my dough out. And then I like to turn it. And I try to make sure that we keep flour on it the entire time so that it doesn't stick. But I want it to be a circle, and that's why I turn it in between every single roll. You see it's long. And then I'm going to get it long this way. So we're able to keep that circular uniform shape. Now, to get it into my pie plate successfully without tearing it, I'm just going to roll it up on the rolling pin like this. A little trick for you because the dough is very tender. And then I'm just going to gently unroll that dough into my plate. Okay, now I don't want it to tear, so I'm going to pick up the edges. That way it can sink into the pie plate. And I'm going to press it in carefully, but I'm holding these edges 
so that I don't tear it. I don't want tension on our dough. This is the point in which you have to decide like how you want to decorate the edge of your crust. What I want to do is I'm going to take off the extra dough, but not all the way up to the pie plate. I'm leaving a little extra because I want to make a thick, pretty design, okay? Just going to show you what I'm doing here. This is fine. I don't want to cut anything off of that. I was only getting it like right here where it's super long. I'm just going to cut off that excess, okay? All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take that extra and I'm going to fold it under and let it land on the edge of my pie plate. Just like that, okay? I'll show you close up. I'm just gonna fold it under just like that, right there on the edge. Gently just fold it under, okay? If you trim too much of your pie shell off, you won't be able to do that. You won't be able to fold it under. Believe me, see, that's a little short. This is gonna be hard for me. So I'm gonna stretch the dough just a touch and try not to break it. But I did learn this the hard way. I was cutting off too much of my dough on the edges because I wanna make a decorative edge. Again, this is a little short, so I'm just gonna give it a little tug a gentle tug, okay, and then there we go, okay, now I have it tucked under all the way. I want to do a crimping method because I think it's really pretty, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my finger and push, let's see, I'm going to take this finger, put it down, and then Pinch the dough around it and then go a little bit further and do it again. See what I'm doing? And because it's thicker, it's going to hold this shape. Okay, if it was thin, it would literally probably just fall right back out. But I'm taking my finger and I'm pinching the pie dough to create this beautiful scalloped edging. I don't really know what you want to call it. I think it's called a ribbon, but right now it's currently my favorite, mostly because it's easy to do. And I don't know, it's just really pretty. Okay. Really pretty. You can see there, I'm just going to pinch, 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 and pinch. And then we're left with that. Now that I have this gorgeous scalloped ribbon edge, whatever, scalloped ribbon edge, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to take my fruit that has been sitting and we're going to go ahead and pour it in. Now, I would like to point out again that my pie plate is bigger than traditional. So it's going to kind of look sad in my pie, <laughs> but um, it'll be okay. I guess I technically need to buy a smaller, a smaller pie plate. Now that I got my fruit in my pie shell, it's time to make the topping. And this is super, super easy. I'm going to take a bowl. I'm going to add one third of a cup of oats a third of a cup of white sugar, a third of a cup of brown sugar, an entire cup of all-purpose flour, lastly, an entire stick of butter. We're gonna add this and mix it with our fingers until it becomes a crumble. I think I'm actually gonna cut this. And that'll I do that is I cut the butter into squares and then I cut it again and then I cut it again. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm literally going to get in here with my fingers and mix all of this up until it becomes a crumble. It's going to take a minute. You're again running everything through your fingers and squishing it to incorporate that butter. So it takes a moment. 
but it is totally worth it. You're going to love this pie. I know you are. You're going to love this pie. Okay, now that I have my topping completely crumbled, it's time to put it on top of this pie. And just to be cute and to also let people know what's actually in this pie, I did two little slices of peach and I'm just going to place a couple of blueberries on top. Just like that, little slice of peach. It kind of lets us know what's on the inside because the crumble really covers it. And it's pretty. All right, you guys, if you wanted to do an egg wash around the edge, you totally could. I'm going to skip that step, and I'm going to go straight into a 350-degree oven for 55 minutes. And I'll see you in a minute. Okay, it's been 55 minutes. Let's grab that pie. I mean, come on. It is gorgeous. I'm going to have to let it cool down for about 20 to 30 minutes, and then I'm going to taste it for you and let you see it. I'm so excited. Okay, it's been cooling. Here comes the moment of truth. Even though it's been cooling, it's still a little warm. I like to serve this pie warm, but it tastes delicious at room temperature. And I'm sure it's even delicious um, cold. It's good no matter what. I'm gonna clean off my knife just because I wanna make some nice clean slices. Now I'm going to try to carefully take out one slice and not tear up the rest of the pie. Oh my goodness. And I'm a crust girly, so I do not mind my crust being extra big, like extra tall. No problem at all. Okay. This is it, guys. This is for you. I've got blueberry. I've got the crust. I've got the peaches. It's like peach cobbler met blueberries. <laughs> blueberry cobbler. This is amazing. This might be one of my favorite pie recipes of all time. I'm so thankful for the recipe. Super thankful for my sister. You have to make it. You have to.